All right, what's up, everybody? You clicked on the video, you know what it is. We're talking about the soft pops. Two, was this device made just for me? No, it wasn't, but it kind of feels like it was. What is the soft pops, too? It's kind of like an analog groove box, a musical sequencer packed into a quirky signal flow that encourages, you know, playful manipulation and uh, creativity. And uh, more than anything else, it's fun as hell. Um, so let's talk about it some more. At its core, the Soft Pops 2 is an analog groove synthesizer. It features an oscillator, a filter, a VCA, an envelope, and a ton of tricks. Like, so many tricks, I, I, I can't even with the tricks here, okay? Um, it features a unique layout that I really, really enjoy. These faders allow you to kind of, you know, uh, adjust multiple parameters all at the same time or you know configure like really intricate movements and different types of things all with one hand you throw two in there you can manipulate like all the parameters on this thing at once uh, the buttons are very playable it's amazing the sound and because I know you want to hear it um, we'll get to but I would call it kind of like an acidic 303 that can be pushed into absolute madness like i said before it's got tons of sound design tricks and quirks paths that you can find new sounds that you can really like wrangle and uh yeah all right so let's get acquainted with the soft pops here and the first thing we're going to talk about which we're going to call kind of a quick start guide is the interface and the signal flow because once you understand how these things interact, the oscillator, the filter, and the envelope, you're going to start to realize that you can do all sorts of crazy and unique things with this device. So, starting on the left here, you're going to find your oscillator course tune on the left, and then this is your oscillator mod amount. Uh, the mod input is right up here, and you can see that by default, it gets a uh, sample and hold voltage. So if you want to just inject random voltage into your oscillator, you turn this guy up. Uh, the sample and hold is triggered by the envelope here, but we're going to get to that. So uh, moving right along here, we've got our filter frequency cutoff. So we're going to turn this on drone mode, which just opens the VCA up uh, so we can hear these two in action here. So here is our filter and our oscillator course. And oh man, li listen to that. Ooh. It just sounds great right off the bat. Um, right above the filter here is our resonance control, which most definitely self oscillates and also sounds juicy. Um, and to the right of our filter cutoff is the filter mod control. So this controls how much mod voltage uh, goes into the filter cutoff. So that jack for input is right there and you can see that the envelope is normal to mod by default. So let's take a look at the envelope here. The envelope is the only set of controls that kind of differs from the control on the left, uh, mod amount on the right. The envelope has rate here and shape here. So if you tap this trigger button, let's turn that up. You can hear that it will fire off the envelope here, right? So, okay, we're gonna turn this off drone mode so we can hear this a little bit better. So let's set that and that high. Okay. Um, so if we go all the way to the bottom of rate, it's going to be obviously a really long. Whoop. Okay. And if we go to the top up here, it's going to be very fast. Whoa. Um, and this guy, our shape is going to go from kind of a 
very saw-like whoop whoop to a very kind of like shark fin wee wee um type shape here so let's hear that okay easy peasy and you can set this envelope to cycle just like that so yeah cycle this is just a cycle on off it's not cycle is down just so you know that kind of confused me for a sec um and here we are it's our cycling envelope right and we can inject a little bit of the sample and hold in there so now every time the envelope fires we get a new little you know and we're already rocking here it's just a nice little beep, 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 beep. And right above our envelope, we get our other filter control. So this is where the money is, right here. Because there's the pop. And there's the pixel. Um, and this is a type of cross mod in the filter and the square oscillator that I haven't totally figured out yet. But uh, pulse width definitely affects the pixel side. Um, pop is very nice right there. I'm very big fan of that um so yeah all right so those are our little faders here right easy peasy okay and then obviously uh, to wrap up here we've got you know our output fader and our input fader and then something that i've noticed everybody loves to just turn is our little xy cross fader here so this guy rocks but you kind of have to patch it to make it do something the default patch boop right there is like nice and a pulse width you know Beautiful. Other than that, on the faceplate here, we've got some buttons that we're going to talk about in just a second here, and we've got some switches. This one controls our OR. And this one does uh, the drone and envelope. And then this is your switch between your filter modes here. You got a high pass, a band pass, and a low pass. It is worth noting that you've got a bandpass output right there. Um, so you can mix that in and do all sorts of other fun stuff very easily. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the buttons now because we haven't even pressed play on this sequencer. Okay, so let's talk about the sequencer and everything else that's going on with the soft pops here because the sequencer and the scales, the trig effects, that is what makes this device incredibly unique, super playable and just fun on a bun. So I'm gonna just start talking about it. If you power this device up, you're probably gonna be greeted with a blank scale, a blank pattern, nothing going on. Head empty, no thoughts, ready to go. But the uh, soft pop here is filled with ideas to be totally honest. So let's just press play. Let's see what happens. Nothing, because we don't have any gates. So let's throw some gates in there, right? So that's easy enough. Gates, you click them on. Bada bing, bada boom, right? Play button, plays them gates. If you don't want to do any sequencing, you can just fire up that sample and hold. But it uh, sounds a little wiggy. So let's go to scale here right we're gonna hit that scale button and one two three four eight right so you can select scales i'll put a little grid of them right here you know so let's go this one and we're gonna turn this drone on again to illustrate this fact wow sounds great sounds quantized so all right sounds uh better we can even Pop that sample and hold up. Still sounds better. Okay, but let's get some information in this sequence. Let's actually, like, you know, make a sequence here. So we're going to turn that sample and hold off there. And 
what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna press play, and then we're gonna push these two buttons at the same time, and then we're gonna move this fader around here, right? Hmm, okay, cool. So, you'll notice that it recorded my fader movement, and it plugged it in there, and then it quantized it. And now we've got a cool sequence, right? So let's put some slide gates in there. So if you hit the slide button, you can put slide gates on, uh, you know, any step you want. Um, I forget. Let's put one right there. So here's something cool. <laughs> So you'll notice here that this fifth step is uh, it's just a little too low. So there's another way we can input sequence information. If the sequencer is stopped, we can click the same two record buttons, and that'll put us into step edit mode, right? So we're going to turn the drone on here, and we'll go to five. And wow, it sounds great, but it's not what we want. So now we can either hold this step and move this fader, or what I like to do is just click the up and down buttons here. We still want it low, we just want it, you know, more audible than it was before. Okay, cool, so that uh, that works for me. And then yeah, you see you can move around. You know, cool, all right, so. Oh yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about some even cooler stuff. Oh, let's turn drone mode off. Alright, so okay. So you'll notice that that's one sequence, right? That's one eight step pattern, which is kind of cool, right? I guess, you know, it's, it's all right, it's cool. It's one, one eight step pattern. But what we can do here to make this even cooler is chain some scales. So if we hold scale and click this and then this and then this. <laughs> So what we can do there is effectively, you know, transpose the whole sequence and make a very short eight step sequence into a much longer, more musical and interesting thing. But that's not the only place we can do that because you can chain scales, you can chain patterns, you can chain play modes. So let's talk about play modes, right? If we hold play, we'll see we're at one. I'll put a little grid probably somewhere over here of the different play modes, but let's hit play here, right? And then let's hold play and it maybe five, six, three, four. And then, you know, okay, so here's something I've noticed. If you hit play here, and then you hold the trig. You can see a little bit more of what's going on. Um, but I've noticed that a few of these are just amazing for, like, performative buildups. Like, if you just uh, stop on, I believe, five here. It's just, you know. You know, so these are super duper fun to play around with and they can just inject brand new life into your sequence and also kind of like play on the different slide gates and things that you insert in there. So yeah, uh, whoa, right? Fun on a bun, okay? So there's one other really cool thing about the sequencer that if you're just getting started, you need to know about, and it is the trig effects, okay? So I'm just gonna hit play here. I'm gonna speed this up, okay? I'm gonna just... Right. Okay, so let's take a look at these trig effects. Hold down trig, and then... 
and just push one of the gate buttons, right? So what you can do here is, is stack them up. This one's like a... Alright, so that one was really cool. Maybe we want to record that in there. So, kind of like, uh, you know, if you're familiar with, like, Teenage Engineering's pocket operator sequence, you can record in those trig temporary effects here, right? So, let's do that by holding trig and play. Okay, cool. Um, I don't like those so much, though, so let's hold them down again to make... Delete them, you know, delete them the same way you put them in. Cool. And you can see when they're firing off by holding trig. Basically, I've noticed that if you're kind of like, if, if there's a lot going on in the sequencer, you can kind of hold trig to like... You know, it lights up your trig effects that are going, and it lights up the sequence that's going, and you know, so yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just like a brief overview of the sequencer. Ah, uh, god damn, this thing just gave me goosebumps. Okay, so uh, okay, so here's some interesting ideas for the sequencer that well, interesting. I think they're interesting. If you just barely push up this sample and hold, you'll get a really nice sort of, you know, um, just a touch of randomness in your scales here. So, you know, that's very nice. I like that quite a bit. Now, something else you might notice is that this little light's going off here, and it looks like it's coming from MIDI gate, but it's actually coming from slide gate in this instance. And one of my favorite things to do is throw that into reverse there. Mm, yeah, mm, quite nice. Um, another one of my favorite little quick patches here is to put the sample and hold output here into the rates. Alright, and as you can see here, we've now got a 1 to a 16 step pattern that is going through, uh, it's actually just going through the one scale. Let's, let's spice that up, let's make it make it go through that scale. Um, and, uh, yeah, just getting a little bit of modulation, like three little <laughs> extra modulations worth. And it'll, like, almost infinitely go forever without, uh, repeating the same thing. And it's so much fun. And we weren't even messing around with play modes in that one. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> what more could you ask for, honestly, in an easy-to-use sequencer? It's, it's so much fun. Go get you one. So, um, you know, if you're hearing this, sounds great. But if you want a lot more delicious, juicy bass, take the triangle output, go into the input here, turn that input up here. Let's do it while the sequence is playing. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, once you've heard that triangle wave in there, just beefing it up through the input channel, you're kind of like, oh, geez, that's a lot of bass. That's a lot of bass. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's definitely nice there. You can also use the Soft Pops 2 as an external processor, much like the first one. Um, it does this very well. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look. 
Something that should be noted here is that uh, you can also use the trig effects while it is processing external vo um, audio. So like if you wanted to do something like... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> so you can get pretty wild with that pretty quick. Um, I would recommend that you try some stuff out. All right, let's just wrap this up with just a few other things that you should know, and then we'll dive into more fun topics uh, in later videos. But I'll also share a couple of ideas and things that I found here. So, um, first of all, if you hit play... <laughs> And you hit down while holding tempo. You can step up and step down, which I find is pretty nice, or you could just kind of tap tempo. You know, so that's pretty fun, easy to learn. Speaking of which, if you want to hop into some MIDI stuff, you just, uh, hold down this button for about five seconds and throw some notes in from like a MIDI keyboard and it will learn. If you're trying to get it to just MIDI sync, you're gonna wanna hold this button, click that, and then look, look, the light's on. So we could turn that off. And uh, you know, so, cool, right? So we're holding the MIDI button. That play button's not on. Also, if you hold the MIDI button, you can uh, select your MIDI channel over here, you know, so. It'll wait though, and then it'll try to learn. So you gotta be fast. You gotta be like MIDI channel seven. Oh, so you know, see uh, MIDI channel one. Uh. Um, so yeah, I mean that's kind of like a little intro to soft pops interfacing, being a cool guy, doing this. <laughs> Okay, you'll notice that a lot of the sounds that I'm making and the sequences that are coming out of this thing are sounding quite acidic. And you might be saying to yourself, well, dang, man, I wish I had an accent. And you know what? Bastle didn't leave you hanging. You can most definitely make yourself an accent. Let's put a slide gate into this malt, right? And then let's take the envelope and also go into this malt, right? So just for... Let's listen to the sequence before, right? Okay, but now I'm gonna take that combined signal of envelope and slide gate, and I'm gonna go into accent, because accent is, uh, it's your VCA control here, so let's, uh, let's listen. Let's say you don't love this. Thank you. 
All right, all right. So, yeah, um, I don't know if that's uh, acidic enough for you, but I sure friggin' hope so. Some very last points that I feel are important points are the back of the unit features an absolutely amazing signal flow diagram uh, as well as the sides and the bottom all feature tips and kind of like you know shorthand for how to operate the MIDI and clock divider and things of that nature which means that this device is very accessible you know with just a very little amount of information you can kind of suss out what's going on here and you know, go to work other than that, the unit feels really, really good. It's, you know, got a decent weight to it. It's very nice. It doesn't come with any rubber feet, but I think I might stick some on there just to stop it from sliding around. Uh, it's about the same size as a Volca, so I imagine that any sort of carrying case that's tailored to fit a Volca will fit this. It's just a tiny bit smaller um, width-wise, so you're probably good there. Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's about all for this video um, we're definitely going to dive deeper into this device in a few other videos we're gonna take a deep look at the sequencer because there's a lot you can do here as well as the MIDI implementation because this has a very nice sort of open style MIDI implementation that uh, really allows you to kind of play around um, we're also gonna look at what uh, sound design tricks you can pull off with this guy as well as interfacing it with uh, other modular synthesizers, what it brings to the table and uh, what you can pull off, I guess you could say. So yeah, stay tuned for those and a bunch more other cool tricks. Like, subscribe, gotta get this Mako boy fed. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, and I think that's about it for this one. Na, 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 na.